Hey what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Python scripting tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at how we can generate a random number so let's go ahead and just jump right in. So the first thing we can do is go ahead and open up a scripting layout. If you don't have one just scroll through here and find the scripting workspace and then we can just arrange the layout so I'm just going to move this panel over we don't need it in this example. Make this a little bit bigger. So to generate a random number is pretty simple and I will show you how to implement it into a script but first I'm going to show you how it works. First we need to import random, so import random. Now we can generate either an integer or a float and in this example I'll just show you both. So first let's start with a float which is a decimal number. To do that we need to type random dot uniform open and close parentheses and then in here I'm going to type zero comma one then if we hit enter it generates a random number 0 0.2 we press the up arrow on the keyboard so we can cycle through them and if i press enter again it should give me another random float so as you can see it's different and we can keep doing that as much as we want now for an integer or a whole number it's a little bit different we just need to type random dot choice open and close parentheses then in here we need to type range then open and close parentheses again. And then in here we can just define the range which we want the random number to come from. So between zero and 10, hit enter, and there we get a whole number. So essentially that's it. And we're gonna now look at it in an example. So make this a bit bigger. Then if we go over here and press N just to open this sidebar here. So let's go ahead and create a button that when pressed, it will generate a random number. Now you could go to templates, go to Python, go find UI panel simple, open it up, uh, add an operator and maybe a property group as well. But I imagine at this point you guys have done it so much uh, you don't need me to show you again. But what I'm going to do instead is just open up a template script and if you want to use this script too there'll be a link in the description, go ahead and check that out. So this script was from a previous tutorial, it was the property group slash enumerator tutorial. If you want to check it out there will be a link up here. Let's just run this script and see what we're working with. We can see we have a string property, which is this here, a float vector property, which is this. And finally, we have an enumerator, which again, we're not going to use any of these. So in fact, let's just get rid of them. Let's go ahead and add our own properties. So first we need a reference name. I'm going to call this random underscore number, then add a colon. And then we need to type bpy.props.integer property open and close parentheses and we could add a couple of arguments in here if we could give this a name so name equals quotation quotation add a comma and we could also give this a default value so let's type default equals zero so let's give this a name so this is the reference name anytime we want to call this we'll be using this name and so let's go down to the panel we no longer have these properties. So I'm just going to delete these two here. And then let's change this. It's no longer my string. We're going to change this to random number, which is this reference here. So now if we hit run script, so we should only see the random number and this button, which won't work if we hit it. Here we get this error. And that's because down here we have some stuff that uh, we need to get rid of. So this is inside the operator. I'm just going to get rid of these. And by the way, if you download the template script, I'll make sure to clean it up. So you should just be able to load it up and then you're good to go. Let's change the label name here. It's no longer add object. So we could name this uh, maybe generate random number, something like that. But again, when we press it, nothing should happen. So before I go any further, I want to tidy a few things up. As you can see down here, I typed out bpy.props, which wasted a little bit of time. So what I could do is go here and type from bpy.props import int property and then any other properties that we want to add in. And now we can just get rid of this. So you no longer need to type out bpy.props. You can just add the name of the property. So I'm going to do the same thing for the types as we did in the last video. Again, if you want to check it out, there should be a scripting playlist up here. So I'm just going to speed through this and I'll be back in a second. I'm just going to press run script again and make sure we don't get any errors. We don't, so that's good. Now we can actually move on to generating the random number. So go down to the operator inside the execution. So when the button is pressed, we want this to generate a random number. 
So I'm going to create a variable. So I'm going to say x equals random dot choice. Open and close parentheses. Then we can type range. Open and close parentheses again. Then I'm going to type 0, comma, 10. So that's for an integer. Again, if you wanted a decimal number, if you wanted a float value, you could just type your reference name equals uh, random dot uniform and then open and close parentheses and then just add your two values. Uh, again, you would need to change this to a float property if you're using a float, but I'm going to be using an integer. So let's get rid of this. OK, so now if we run script, we don't get any errors, which is good. And the last thing we need to do is import the random like we first did in the Python console. So let's go to the top. Let's go down here. Then we just need to type import random. And there we go. So now if we hit run script, generate the random number. Now you're going to have to take my word for it, but it did generate a random number. It's not displayed anywhere since we've not told it to display anywhere. So let's go ahead and do that now. In the operator, I'm going to go down here. Now, of course, we want this random number to be displayed here. But for debugging purposes, let's first print this in the system console. So let's go down here, type print, open and close parentheses. And then within here, we're just going to type X. So it's going to print the value of X. So whatever the random number is, hit run script, generate random number. And yeah, we don't see anything. So we need to open up the system console. So let's scroll through here, find window toggle system console and we should get this so in the system console we can see down here it's printed the number one and if we keep pressing this number it should just keep generating a random number that we can see so it might be a little hard to see it's so small so one thing you'll notice it cycles through every number except number 10 i'm going to change this to 11 hit run script and then press this a whole bunch of times so it will show a range between 0 all the way up to 10. 11 won't be displayed. So and we can see it's now displaying 10, but not 11. So I doubt it's a bug, but just keep that in mind. If you want a range between 1 and 10, just add one number extra. So now that works and we know it works since we've tested it, we can get rid of this print. We don't need it. We could also toggle the system console, get rid of that as well. So now we know this works. All we need to do is update this number property. So we go back to the top here. We just want to update this value with whatever the random number is. So that's pretty simple to do. And if you followed the previous tutorial where we did look at property groups, you'll probably already know how to do this. So down here under the X, we need to use that reference, which is my tool dot random underscore number equals X. So we're saying we want this property to be X, which is a random number. So hit run script to make sure we don't get any errors. Then if we hit generate random number, it should generate a random number as it does. You can do this as many times as you want. Make sure we cycle through all the numbers and we don't see number 11, so that's fine. So another thing we could do is add a list of words or icons and make them cycle between the different ones depending on this number. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go back to the property group. Then let's create a list. So I'm going to call this text underscore list equals open and close square brackets. Then within here, I'm going to type quotation, quotation, then separate this with a comma, add another quotation, quotation, separate with a comma and quotation, quotation. And for this, I'm just going to say A, B and C. Now we want to display this on our panel. So go down to your panel. Then we can decide do we want it on the bottom or the top. So let's put it above this number here. To display text, it's pretty simple. We're going to type layout dot label open and close parentheses then within here i'm going to type text equals and normally we'd type quotation twice then within here we just add some words hit run script and there we go in this example we don't want to enter any words so i'm going to get rid of these what we want to do is use our list or at least one of these within the list so as always we need to type the reference name my tool dot text underscore list now if we try to hit run script now see what happens this disappears and it actually kicks up an error code down here and if we read it it says there's an error with the keyword argument text function dot text expected a string type not list so yeah we can only use strings 
So what we need to do is type open and close square brackets. Then within here, we need to type an index number. So index number zero. Now, if we run script again, this comes back and now it displays A, which is index number zero. So as we know, Python, the way it works, uh, the first input is always index number zero, index number one and index number two. So this works, but we only want it to be displayed if the number is zero or if the number is one or if the number is two. So the way we're going to do that is get rid of this index number. And again, we need to type this reference here. So my tool dot random underscore number. So what this is saying is we want you to display the list, but we only want you to display the index number based off of the random number that we had. So what we need to do now is go back down here to this range and we want to change this end value. So we know we have three different options. And again, this is going to be index zero. This is going to be index one. This is going to be index two. So we need to just change this to three. So now we hit run script. Uh, we get this error here. Let me just quickly open this up and then index error list index out of range. So down here we can see we changed it from 11 to three. So that last number was more than three. So that's just creating an error here saying we're outside of the range. So what I'm gonna do real quick is copy this, delete it, then just give this a random number like this, hit run script just to bring it back. Then if we hit generate number, it will only generate a number between zero, one and two. So now back here, I'm just going to delete this and paste that back in. Hit run script and there we go. So now when we generate a random number, it's going to change this letter based on the index number. So remember index is zero is A, one is B, and if we can find two, two is C. So we can see it's really simple as long as we remember the index numbers. Uh, we could also do the same thing for icons. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to type another reference name. So this we can call icon underscore list equals open and close square brackets. And it's the same thing as we did in the last list. I'm going to add a quotation twice, comma, quotation, comma, quotation. Then within here, we just need to type some icon names. So we could press control T, go down here to the developers tab and open up the icon viewer. Now, if you don't see these, you do need to go to the preferences and enable the developers tools. You could also go down here and click this and it'll open up all the icons here. So it's up to you how you do that. So let's go ahead and select some icons. I'm gonna select one and then paste it in here. Select another one, paste it here. And then finally paste it here. Then close this by pressing control T. So now we have an icon list. We need to display it on our panel. So just as we did with this list here, it's a little bit different. So let's go down here and type layout dot label, open and close parentheses. Instead of text, we're now just going to define an icon. So icon equals. Now normally we'd type apostrophe twice and then type a name in here, something like that. Then if we hit run script, we can see it shows an icon. And we want this to change depending on the random number. So again, we're going to do pretty much the same thing we did here. So let's get rid of this. Let's type our reference, which is my tool dot icon underscore list, open and close square brackets. And then this part is exactly the same. So you could copy this in here. Now hit run script. And as we cycle through these, we can see it adds a random icon. So there we go, that's how to generate a random number. Uh, again, you don't have to use it like this. You don't have to add a button which will generate the random number. You can use it in loads of different ways. But I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.